Rationalizing the denominator is one of the coolest things about exponents and it pops up in the strangest of places in other topics outside of exponents. Okay, so there's an interesting philosophy here. We are told that denominators should not have thirds in them. Okay, that is that is just a philosophical idea. It is because you can't really work with denominators if they have thirds because finding LCDs is really difficult. So what we basically do, and you might have seen this with um, the tan function in trig last year, you'll pick up your calculator and you will go uh, type in tan of 30 and you'll see your calculator will spit out root 3 over 3. Okay. But if you were doing this using special angles, you wouldn't have gotten that. And this is the only way we can actually tell that you're using a calculator in trig with special angles. So the calculator gives you that, but your answer would have been 1 over root 3. Okay, so how are they the same thing? Well, because what's happened here is the calculator has taken the 1 over root 3 and rationalized the denominator because of this little rule here. Okay, and the way that it's done it is it's basically said, okay, how do I fiddle with the denominator to get it into a non-third? Well, the way to get that into a non-third would be to multiply by root 3, but then we're going to play the same tricks we've always done with fractions and what you do to the top, you do to the bottom, right? And root 3 times root 3 gives me the 3, and 1 times root 3 gives me root 3, so that's a rationalized denominator version of this thing. And that's all we're going to do. It gets a little bit more complex than that, but that's the concept. Okay. Another reason I want you to understand what this is and to know why we're using it is because sometimes you'll find that your answers aren't exactly the same as the back of the textbook or the memo. And it might be because they've rationalized the denominator and you haven't, or your calculator rationalized the denominator and the textbook or the memo didn't and that can happen in things like the distance formula in um, in analytical geometry okay right so let's look at how to do this so you've already seen what I'm trying to do I'm going to essentially get rid of the third at the bottom and I'm going to do whatever it takes to remove that third here it's going to be exactly the same as the tan I'm going to multiply it by root 3 over 3 and I get my root 3 from the denominator so that's the way I'm going to rationalize it, so I just have to do that to the top as well. Okay, so then I end up with 6 root 3 at the top, over 3 at the bottom, and of course in maths we're always simplifying, so the 6 over 3 part of it can then simplify further to 2, so my answer here is 2 root 3, which looks so different to the original, but it is the same thing, just with a rationalized denominator, which then actually falls away. Okay, for this one, it's not a root, it's not a square root, it's a cube root. So just think for a moment, what does it take to get rid of the cube root of 2? What do I have to multiply it by so that I end up with 2? Because if I multiply it by another cube root of 2, you can check that on the calculator, it doesn't give me 2. I actually need to multiply it by the cube root of 2 twice. Okay, if I do that, the fact that it's now multiplied essentially three times means that I'm going to end up with 2 at the bottom. It also means I need to do the same at the top. Okay. So again, you can do this on the calculator and get your actual final answer, but you need to show every single little step, even if you are checking out some of the steps on the calculator to see if you're multiplying by the right thing. Okay, so that's quite confusing at the top. I end up with 8 times the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 2. I'm just showing that step to help demystify that for you. And at the bottom, I know it's going to get to 2. Okay, so how do I do this? How do I do cube root of 2 times cube root of 2? Well, it's the same root, so that's just going to give me cube root of 4, which of course doesn't have a cube root, so that's going to give me something a little bit less than pretty. The 8 and the 2 cancel very nicely, so 
my answer is actually then 4 times the cube root of 4 over 1, so I can just leave it like that. The last one is very interesting and very different because it looks like it can't be done. Okay, um, there's a new word here, conjugate. And what I want you to remember is that this looks like one half of a dot. Okay, so it's not something you could have recognized right now in the first time you're being taught this, but it is something you need to look for in the future. The conjugate is the other half of the dots. So this is one half, the other half would be 4 plus root 3. And so when I said at the beginning we multiply by whatever it takes to get this thing to be rational, then that's what it takes in this case. Okay, so I need to multiply by 4 plus root 3 at the top as well. Okay, so now we must just remember at the bottom it's not just going to be a, a, a number like the other ones where it's going to be what happens to the dots once you've foiled it out. And remember that's going to be squaring the first term squaring the last term which is just 3, right? Careful there. And do the baby steps on the calculator while your brain is getting confused by something new. It will be a minus in between because that is what makes it a dots. And then at the top I'm going to have basically 5 times this bracket. So I need to then distribute that in. So it's going to be 20 plus 5 root 3. Okay, cleaning that up, I'm going to have the 20 plus the 5 root 3 on top and 16 minus 3 is just 13. If it wasn't 13 and if it was 15 or multiple of 5 I'd look at taking out a common factor of the 20 and the 5 so that things could cancel further but in this case it doesn't so I just leave my answer in simplest third form like that.